back to Gypsy Earth Design and Healing. My name is Pam. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you like Wednesday's video, the November vlog video, where I took you along with me candle vessel shopping. I had a lot of fun recording that. I found a few things to work with. So today I'm going to show you the Christmas tree candle vessel that I found. I'll also show you the silicone molds that I found at the Dollar Tree, how those work out. I will as well show you the epic fail of the Christmas tree pillar mold. Should have went with my first idea on that and just waited for my molds from Etsy. Now, please like, subscribe, and share this video. I appreciate your support on this channel so much. Let's get right into today's topic. So this is the sad, unfortunate ending of the Christmas tree pillar mold. I thought putting a rubber band on it and taping it all down at the seams would work, but unfortunately not. I um, thankfully did pour it in a coffee cup. I just kind of set it down in there. Um, and yeah, it leaked all out at the seam there and leaked all out in the cup. I've got to chunk this dish towel and scrape it all off my counters. So I do not recommend this mold at all. Hmm. Yeah, it proved to be a complete failure. So it's gonna go back to Amazon. <laughs> hey, so welcome back. We're over in my workstation. I wanted to show you how these molds worked out. I also found these at Walmart. They're little uh, snowflake molds. So I'm gonna show you how these work out. They actually came out pretty good. Um, this is the disaster of the pillar candle. Um, ended up using this for the wax melt. So I'm gonna show you how I packaged that. I also got these cute little containers at Walmart. They're just uh, little paper trays wrapped in plastic. I'm gonna put a logo sticker somewhere on this now. So I'm very happy with how they came out. Also, this is the Christmas tree um, candle vessel that I found. Now, this is the uh, second or third one that I made of this. Um, I'm going to show you this particular one because I determined with the Coco Soy, it is a CD14 that works with this vessel. Now, I'll show you what happened when I tried to use a CD18. As you can see in here, we've got lots of tunneling. It first, I first thought maybe I'd just trim the wick too short. So what I did is I took a little wax out just to make sure I had the wick the appropriate length and I lit it again and sure enough, it tunneled out again and drowned out that wick. So this is what happens when you're using a wick that's too large for your vessel. Now how Candle Science judges this is that you can go on their website and um, go and put in your wax type that you're using and then put in your um, size of your diameter of the vessel that you're using. Now they suggested to me a 14 and I thought well since it's going to be a little bit bigger down here let me try an 18 and that didn't work out as you can clearly see. So I wanted to show you how that looked. Now we are getting ready to pour one here with the correct wick on it, the CD14. I've already got it all ready to go here. Now I'm really loving the colors on these. So I have decided to leave the actual wax, just the natural color of the cocoa soy. And over here, I've already got measured out my fragrance oil with my Christmas Eve fragrance that I'm going to be using from Studio Fragrance. So let's get right into making this. Now I'm going to use some gloves today. So I've got my wax at a appropriate temperature of 235. Now I do heat that a little higher because we're going to pour it a little higher. So as I've showed you in previous videos, we're going to go and take our scale down to zero. Make sure it sits appropriate before you start getting your wax out. So I've got that down to zero and I've already got my measurements up here. Same as I always do. I put it up here on my little board so that when I'm actually pouring, I don't have to figure out what's going on with the wax and oil that I need. So I figure out I need one pound, four ounces of wax and I'm going to put 2.5 ounces of fragrance oil. So I'm going to measure that out. I've already got my pot of water going over here so that I can hold that temperature.
When your wax pot gets down a little close to the bottom, you may have to just tip it so you can get everything out. Now, great. I am at 1.4 ounces of wax. I'm going to bring it over here to my pot. And I am going to immediately pour in my fragrance oil. So now that I've got it in here, it does come down. I'm down to 220 now. So I'm pouring in my fragrance oil. I'm in my fragrance oil now, stirring that in. I'm going to stir that for about two minutes. This is a Christmas Eve fragrance. It smells just delightful. You've got like wonderful aromas of uh, baked goods with a tiny hint of a little bit of pine in there. So it smells great. I'm not having to put any uh, mica. Mica, you don't want to put that in with a candle that you've got wicks in because it will clog out your wick and it will not burn right. Here soon I'll do a video on wickless candles, or you can load that up with mica if you want. Put any kind of um, candle dye in there that you want as well. I always find it seems they burn better. The less dye and additions you add to it, they do better. So I'm going to stir it for a couple more seconds. I'm smelling those wonderful aromas. Now same with um, previous videos that we've talked about. You want to try to pop out all your air bubbles. So I've got this at 200, and that's a great pour temperature. So I'm going to try to hold it at that for just a minute. And I'm getting ready to pour. I've got all my bubbles down. Now, I do put this in a warm oven as well. So a lot of these bubbles that are left remaining, they will pop out while it's warming or cooling down in the oven. The reason I put it in the oven, I know I've talked about this on previous videos, is I put it in the oven so that way it can cool at a more uh, slower pace. The slower you cool your candle, the less likelihood you're going to get the um, frosting on the side and the big wet spots on the side. So I've got this vessel at probably about a little over 170 degrees. I'm going to put it in the 170 degree oven. And so I'm going to pour it up. There we go. Now I see a couple of little bubbles on there. Before I go put this in the oven, I'm going to just take my little thermometer that I had down in the wax and I'm going to just use it to pop out those bubbles. Now later on, you can go around it with a heat gun and that's going to get out the bubbles. But I try to eliminate them most as I can before I put it in the final cool down stage. So there we go with that. Now this has worked out really well. I wanted to show you how it looked when you tunneled them out so you know what to look for. So you don't think that like I did, possibly you may have trimmed it too short. Um, but I wanted to give that wick a good try. Now on uh, Wednesday's video, we are going to be talking about uh, more abundance type uh, topics with this. And... Also, please like, subscribe, and share this video. I really appreciate your support on this channel. Thank you so much, and I will see you on Wednesday.